we're looking at all of connected and autonomous transport and really any issues around that, regulations, safety and the technology development in the UK. The projects that we're often involved in are demonstrators, so we, we start with more controlled environments and sort of build up to um, the real world. We've been working on uh, what we call pods, small um, self-driving vehicles that actually travel on pavements as well as roads and we've really looked at how the pods can be used as a platform for other people to test on um, as well so that's what we have here in the lab we've been modifying pods and people can come and um, try out sensors algorithms anything that they are working on and they don't have the ability to develop it all um, themselves so at the moment, there's an empty space over there. We are missing the pods. They don't happen to be here today. We've got a bit of a pod behind you. What's the current state? Where did you get to or where are you at with these pods at the moment? So we demonstrated them using a control system from Oxford University, but we have an interface that's open. So that was the Oxford system plugged in. And now the pods at the moment are in Bristol working as part of the Flourish programme, which is looking at accessibility and user friendliness of pods, particularly for the older generations. From a purely selfish point of view, is there going to be a point where I can go to the pub, have two or three beers, and then just jump in one of these and press a button and go home? That is some people's vision, certainly. <laughs> um, and I guess the, there's a different levels of autonomy, and with the pods we're really looking at that end point so what's usually called level five um where you don't have to do anything so you, as the you basically become a passenger rather than a driver and so you don't have any responsibility um for the journey in which case whether you are in a fit state or not is not important but most of the um, vehicles and systems that are coming out at the moment especially in sort of traditional cars have some level of um, responsibility still on the driver so there definitely is the vision of the future and there are some level five systems in controlled environments for example at Heathrow Terminal 5 they have pods taking you to and from the business car park they go sort of within tracks but they're not not really following the tracks that's more a safety thing um, but there you are just a passenger so that could be the vision of uh, pods in Milton Keynes one day. With the system we had originally, there's really three main computers. So there's one that's actually owned by the sort of base pod and that controls normal things in a car like lights and that kind of thing, but also has a safety responsibility. So if you have a control system that you um, put on top, um, if anything goes wrong with that, the pod will um, come to a halt basically. Um, and then the control system, the autonomous control system, is usually made up of, again, two um, machines, a kind of low-level and high-level controller. So the high-level controller is doing everything you would expect in terms of bringing in sensor data, having the maps that it then compares against and making decisions. And the low-level computer is taking a command from that and doing a small amount of sort of sense checking and again if there's any issues that will um, in in the case of the pods that low level computer will make sure that the the trajectory um, that you're following always ends in zero so if it doesn't get a new correct command it will just slowly bring the pod to a halt unless the next command says actually keep going at, at some speed we're in the centre of Milton Keynes, we had a mapped area with certain destinations that you could pick, a uh, user interface that was touch screen so you could choose where you wanted to go when you went in um, and as long as you uh, closed the door, put your seatbelt on and satisfied the other safety interlocks then um, you were in autonomous mode and it would take you to your destination avoiding any obstacles along the way. The pods operate on pavements as well as roads um, and they were intended to do this kind of last mile um, journeys so they travel up to 24 kilometers an hour but they don't usually make it that far so it's a bit faster than walking pace usually but uh, not 
not that much and only what's safe to do, depending on who's around. You mentioned they go on the pavements, which in the US they call a sidewalk. What happens if they run into pedestrians? I mean, I didn't mean literally run no. into pedestrians. What happens if, if you come across pedestrians? Yeah, so the laser scanners and cameras are always looking out for what we usually call obstacles ahead. Um, and the path is being optimised based on that. So you can decide sort of how close you feel comfortable going to the obstacles. But once you've set that, then the pod will try to go around. Um, and one of the challenges in this kind of environment is actually if you want to follow behind someone at their speed, that's a different thing to just going up to them, stopping, because now you're close and then they've gone away, so you go again. You can end up with a bit of a jerky ride. And the same if you end up in a crowd, but you want to keep progressing through. Um, that's one of the areas that we started to think about was how assertive to be. And I know that's a problem they've had with other self-driving cars. Actually, in America, with stop signs, sometimes you need to actually assert that you're about to go. And that might not seem always like the safe thing to do, but otherwise you might sit at a junction forever. So um, there's that trade-off. We also looked at various ways of communicating with um, pedestrians. So um, having a noise that was just sort of an underlying noise as well as maybe a, some sort of horn or beep. And obviously you could also actually have a voice asking people to move aside or something. So I think you could do it in a friendly way, but that people would still be aware that uh, something was coming up behind them and they might want to move to the side. Often when we encounter pedestrians, particularly if they're come on coming to the vehicle and they've seen it, they will often modify their path as well to sort of go around it, even if they're on their phone or something, will just look up and not really notice that it's something different, but just avoid it. So there's quite a lot of behavioral science to go into sharing environments where there aren't really rules of the road. This is a world apart from Tesla autopilot 70 miles an hour on a motorway. Do you think it still has a place or should people be using bikes and walking and stuff? Yeah, so the, the pods definitely, if you look at some use cases, they, they look like they might be taking some journeys that you would otherwise walk or cycle, but it's really about the overall um, idea of mobility and, and options and in our case we're not actually developing this as a transport system necessarily we're just interested in the technology and how the UK can can develop it um, but there is a whole spectrum of uh, autonomous projects and we're also involved in some of the more traditional car projects. With the pods we did a lot of uh, safety work and obviously with all autonomous systems that's uh, really the whole driver for having autonomy um, and we were looking from the point of view of these low speed vehicles we often ended up with um, coming to a stop being the safest thing to do not all of the time but most of the time um, and there are a number of sort of layer levels and different um, computers on board which will check each other um, and if anything is uh, not sending the right signals then there will be a, a, a way to um, stop the, the vehicle. I guess with any um, machine learning system you're worried about false positives and false negatives um, and in the case of the pods if you stop for no reason that's usually a safer thing to do so a lot of our systems were erring on the side of more um, safety being that you would stop if you weren't sure of anything. Um, but obviously if you're on the motorway um, being autonomous, then just coming to a stop is not, not the answer. So a lot of vehicle manufacturers are stating that they will take the responsibility for um, quite a lot of the issues if it's their software in charge. Um, there, there is discussion of uh, kind of a black box to see who, who was involved. Um, but the insurance companies and car companies are starting to move it more towards that product liability and away from the driver responsibility. Um, and the UK government has consulted on that recently. So um, it's work in progress. Um, and so that all, that's all fed into the computer and done in real time. And all of that talks back to our HQ server 
um, so where the pod is, what's it doing. Uh, when we're running publicly, we're going to have all of the jobs coming through.